Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. We're going to forego our normal music in honor of our lead-off story. Oh, yes. There you go. Some, some music for where we are today in our country. Here we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Welcome to The Correct Views. Indoctrinate the children. That's true. Tell them how to obey. Tell them what they're allowed to do, what they're allowed to wear, how they're allowed to say it. Tell them there is no God. What the hell is Sam talking about? All right, friends, now that I've put that song in your head, which is an unfortunately a terrible song that's crafted well, uh, did you know that America is now similar to the 1930s Germany? Now, before we begin, no, I am not saying that Obama is going to necessarily be the dictator. I'm not going to say that he is going to gas Jews. or That's not what I'm saying here. It's not even so much about Obama. It's two parts. First of all, it's important to understand that our culture is pretty much where the culture was between the First World War and the Second. And by that I mean, uh, look up the Golden Age of Grotesque, or Gaga, either one. Uh, like Golden Age of Grotesque is a Manson CD, uh, Gaga is an Alice Cooper CD. They, they deal with the, that time period, and it saw a dumbing down of society in order to pave the way for leaders to come in who were doing terrible things. And one of the things they did was change the laws in order that someone like Hitler could come in and quote-unquote legally become the dictator. And while that is not the case in America today, and anyone that says that it is, in my opinion, is way, way wrong, I think it's important to point out clearly that we are in fact setting ourselves up to go in that direction. The other thing I think it's important to note is... In, in some ways, I think this article by Illinois Mike is, uh, if you read between the lines, is saying disparaging things about Donald Trump. And I'm going to go ahead and give my uh, very easy answer to his question here uh, at the conclusion of this. Listen to this. This is important because if it's happened throughout history before, then it can happen again. And I think... That's why I want to lead with this. I think it's very important. So, friends, please stay with me. If you think the things that have been done in this country under the current administration are bad, it has yet to come. And this is what we need to keep our eyes on. Now, this isn't going in the direction that you think it is. Listen to this. Ultimately, it will be the people as a whole who will choose between stopping or participating in the demise of this country. All the perversion and anti-American activity that is being pushed and displayed on the population is being done with a purpose. If we look back just 70 years ago, we can see exactly why. In Germany, it says, prior to the adoption of National Socialism, the country was comprised of two-thirds Protestant and one-third Catholic. Germany was essentially then a Christian nation. Coming into the 1930s and before the, before the rise of Adolf Hitler, Germany was considered the most socially progressive country in Europe. Open homosexuality, transgendered persons, and the whole cabaret culture was adopted by and thrust upon the population by the types that we would call liberals today. In fact, the first recorded male-to-female gender reassignment surgery occurred in Berlin in 1931. Now let me pause. I'm not out here preaching morality. I'm, I, I like a whole lot of things that aren't moral. But I'll tell you what, I, I'm a DJ, among other things. And I DJ in a, an adult club. And I have noticed this. I have no problem with sex in art. I don't. Um, the Greeks had four kinds of love. Uh, Euros, which was uh, erotic. Uh, familia, your family, of course. They had uh, agape, which was the all-consuming love. And then the other one, I forget the word for it. Uh, somebody comment line me. It was your friends and uh, people around you like that. All four of those. I have no problem with porn. I have no problem with any of that. I really don't. Um, I think that's something that is personal to each person, whether they choose to watch it or not watch it. 
what I'm seeing is a departure from art and um, panache, flair, or whatever you want to call it. That structure is being destroyed, and it's quickly becoming just a matter of can the girl shake her ass? I mean... It, there was a lot more art in this than I've been seeing lately when I when I work in this place. And it bothers me. It's not a, re a reflection on the place. I mean it as a reflection on society because I work in kind of a higher-end club. But the point is that it's we're losing all sense of art in this country. And I th that's a lot of what was going on here. It all became a matter of sexuality and nothing else. I'm going to go on here. This type of activity and behavior was hefted upon the average German who was tolerant of it because of their Christian foundations, initially having a live and let live attitude toward members of their society, and I agree. However, because they saw it destroying their traditional value system and were watching it being thrust upon their children, it was essentially grinding on the underlying psyche of the average German citizen, much like in the U.S. today. What's that mean? It means that I personally have no problem with two gay people getting married if the church that they're going to chooses to marry them. I do have a very big problem with forcing a church to marry anyone. That's why I think government needs to get the hell out of marriage. Um, it becomes... It becomes a problem when the, the ideals of people that you don't agree with go beyond being tolerated and are expected to be accepted. Let me say that again. It becomes a problem when tolerance becomes uh, legally replaced with acceptance is another way to put it. It's a problem. It's an infringement. It says, then suddenly a tough-talking man comes onto the scene speaking in populist language about a restoring the greatness of Germany. That would be Hitler. One of his first actions taken were to return Germany to its greatness it was the Rostag Fire Decree, which modified their constitution to allow restrictions on personal liberty. What would that be? That would be like the Patriot Act that we brought in after 9-11. That was our Rostag Fire, to use the analogy. And again, we found out later that Hitler burnt the Rostag down himself, which many people know 9-11 uh, didn't happen in the exact way that they want you to believe. It says, there are also restrictions on privacy and postal, telegraphic and telephonic communications, and warrants for house searches, orders for confiscations, as well as restrictions on personal property. If you think I'm nuts, then do me a favor. Would you please let me know which one of those we're not seeing today? Because I'm seeing all of that today. It said, it was followed by a book burning, which was the purging of German society of the literature of perversion literally the burning of pornography and associated materials and textbooks that were viewed as the source of the perversion, which are you know, things like the story of O. But this quickly, however, evolved into burning all sorts of things that challenged the agenda of the Nazi party. You understand that they get a number of people on their side to do one thing and then overextend it. Patriot Act, to stay with the uh, earlier mentioned act. Patriot Act it was supposed to be used to spy on terrorists. It is now used to spy on us. That's what they're talking about here. This was what was going on before Hitler really came onto the scene. Roundups began afterwards, it says then. Uh, Milton Meyer's 1995 poem, uh, 1955 book, they, th they thought that they were free, of course. We have Martin Niemöller's poem, I should say. Uh, and one of the uh, famous lines in it, if I may, first they came for the socialists, but I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade uni unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me at all. That is why, as a Christian... I support the rights of satanic death metal bands to sing about how much they hate Christianity. Why? Because if you tell them they can't speak, then sooner or later people who aren't Christians come and tell you that you can't speak either. Am I equating the two? No. 
but I'm saying both need to be able to speak, is what I'm saying. More accurately, they came for the gypsies in Nazi Germany, of course, <clears throat> and the perverts who had tainted the German society, and those people who had come out and proudly identified as tolerant during this period. What did they do? Uh, they rounded them up. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite stories, uh, I, I believe Savage tells this too, is that the SA, the original uh, jackboots of the German Nazi army, uh, gatherings, what they would do is they would recruit all of the outcasts from society. They'd say things like, come, Mr. Homosexual, we will accept you when society has not. And they would say, come, Mr. You know, Child Molester, come on in. They would say, you know, Mr. F uh, repeat Felon, come on in. Well, after they grew, the best of the best wanted to get in the brightest, the smartest. So then they got in. And the ruling elite, which was Hitler and his entourage, decided the best thing to do was to keep the best and brightest and make them the SA, or the SS. What was the SS's first job? To kill the SA. Yep. All the people that they brought in and said, we now accept you, they killed them. They killed them. Rome was a homosexual. Guess what? Hitler killed him. He was in charge of the SA, Rome. Hitler killed him. And this is very important because of what I'm going to say here. Please pay attention. Once the concentration in the ghettos and roundups began, the ignorant, browbeaten population were now effectively too scared into submission to do anything about it. Their submission and worship of God was transformed into the submission and worship of the state, and the groundwork was laid for all hell to break loose. Whether or not you're a Christian or not, have you not seen that happen here? Have you not seen more and more mockery of all things religious and more and more worship of the state, worship of Bush, worship of Obama? I've seen it. What, you haven't? What, 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 where have you been if you haven't seen it? Now listen, most important paragraph in the entire piece. So, as scary as this shift is that occurred under the current political leadership in, leadership in America, it is the rapid and extreme movement in the other direction that we should be aware and afraid of. In other words, they're going to destroy the very people that they have brought in, is what they are warning here. The people are ready to support anyone who is willing to get the job done. And this is the point where decades can happen in weeks, to quote Vladimir Lenin, swinging this country so far in the other direction that we find ourselves quickly on the wrong side of history. And it goes on here to question whether or not uh, the, uh, the... Basically what he's trying to say is by running outsiders out of your country, this is where the article goes, he tends to imply that that could, uh, that could lead to another Hitler, and I think it could. However, I think he's making an analogy here that, uh, once listen to this, one has to ask themselves if, for instance, the Republican, say Donald Trump, tough guy, candidate, with populist, which is the word they throw around for Donald, populist rhetoric were to be elected, and he and his get-it-done attitude wanted to round up and deport ethnic and religious minorities like Hispanics and Muslims. How many of today's society would oppose it? Let me answer the question real easy for you, bonehead. Two very important things that you need to realize. First of all, Adolf Hitler wrote Mein Kampf way before he got uh, uh, into office. And he was talking about rounding up and killing Jews. If you read Donald Trump's book, The Art of the Deal, which he promotes nonstop, guess what? No racism, nothing in it of the sort at all. That's one difference. Second of all, again, I'm saying we, we know what both men believed before they got into office. Second of all, Donald Trump says he wants to round up the illegals and deport them. I have no problem with it. If Donald Trump says he wants to round up the illegals and put them in a gas chamber, I have a huge problem with it. It was a really good article to the bonehead got to the bottom. Illinois Mike, I don't know, man. There's something wrong with you. 
Um, listen to this. Stampede kills more than 700 at the Hajj pilgrimage near Mecca. I'm not going to go into this a lot. It's by Faith Carmi, Shams Elzer, CNN. The reason I want to get to it ever so quickly, because we did it last Saturday as well, is because it's a. I think it's an interesting, whenever anything happens to America, how many of you remember after 9-11, the NASA disaster that happened? You had... Um, crazy, not regular Muslims, I mean the leadership, the crazy Muslim fundamentalist leadership saying that that was America's judgment for, you know, being evil enough to ever try to get Osama bin Laden. And again, I, I think America had a role in it, but I think no matter what, we simply had to get him. I don't think we should have done everything we've done now, but I mean, I was not against getting him, which was again the lie that was fed to us. Um, it's interesting, 700 people were injured and 800, 700, I'm sorry, more than 700 killed 800 injured in Saudi Arabia. I think it's interesting to note one thing. You could argue that it's their responsibility to take care of their brothers, the Arab brothers. If, uh, if a terrible disaster happened in Canada, I like to think that we would find some way to accept more of them than you would expect Afghanistan to accept because it is simply a radically different culture. I'm not saying it's a bad culture. I'm saying they don't always mesh well. Arab, uh, Islam does not always mesh well with the West. Well, Saudi Arabia didn't bring any of their brothers in at all. And they have these Hajj tents. And there are millions, like two million people, they, they, they trek through the desert or whatever to go and throw rocks at a pillar for, uh, to reenact a, a point of Muhammad's life, where he threw rocks at the devil, whatever. Point is, this Hajj, this respect, was more important than the lives of the millions of people that needed a place to stay. And the Hajj tents are pretty much the cutting edge of tent technology, if you will. You can live comfortably in them. They're air-conditioned. Um, some of them have fridges and amenities it was not offered to them at all. And I think it's interesting that, I'm not saying it's justified because I don't like to see 700 people die, so I'm not going to say that. But I think it's interesting that the people that led to the death of so many people saw it happen anyway because they really they were in a position to help a lot of people of their own religion and their own culture, and they left them for dead. And again, I'm not saying that the cultures can't mesh. I'm saying, for whatever reason, Islam and Christianity have not meshed well in most instances in recent history. Uh, TheVerge.com. Uh, I do the news from the science front every Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, MediaSpeaks.com. I've got too much science news to get to, so for those of you that are regular viewers, you know exactly what I do when that happens. We bring some cool news into the correct views. And this is really good news. We need some good news after all the gloom we've had. Prosthetic limb used to restore near natural sense of touch claims DARPA. I was thrilled with this. The U.S., and again, DARPA has been known to bring a lot of good and a lot of evil into our lives, but this, I think, is very, very good. The U.S. military agency DARPA says that it has successfully restored a test subject's sense of touch using a prosthetic hand connected directly to the brain. And for those of you seeing Truth Cam, there are links for everything I'm reading, Fact Cam, as it were. The research was carried out on an anonymous 28-year-old man who was paralyzed after suffering a spinal cord injury more than a decade ago. So, I mean, this happened to him when he was only 18. An array of electrodes were placed in the volunteer's sensory cortex, the part of the brain that identifies touch, and connected to pressure sensors of a prosthetic hand with electrical signals sent from the hand to the brain. When blindfolded, the subject was able to tell with almost 100% accuracy which of the mechanical fingers on the hand were being touched. Do you realize how wonderful this is? I mean, this is some of the best news you'll ever hear, and you don't hear it. No one reports it. I'm not, I'm not like the only person commenting on this at all. It says the feelings he was perceiving were near natural. At one point, instead of pressing one finger, the team decided to press two without telling him, said Justin Sanchez, head of DARPA's revolutionizing prosthetics program, which has been developing new 
upper limb prosthetic since 06. It says he responded in jest, asking whether somebody was trying to play a trick on him. That is when we knew that the feelings that he was perceiving through the robotic hand were near natural. That's wonderful news. It, it, great news. Um, he was... Uh, DARPA previously released footage, it says, of their prosthetics work in February this year, showing a volunteer rock climbing using a robotic arm. It claims its research represents the first in the world of prosthetics, but the full extent of their work is not yet clear. I'm delighted. Now, again, people are saying they're going to use this technology to go ahead. I'm going to play this video while I'm talking. I love fact camp. Um, it's saying that they're going to, some people have claimed they're going to use this to make robots to, to track us down and they'll be able to feel and it'll make them more human. And of course, DARPA, for those of you that don't know, do create a lot of things like that that are dreadful. But I'm going to tell you something here. When I'm seeing people with injuries like that, that are able to touch and feel and are working well again, this needs to be handled in the same common sense way that I would say, uh, for instance, Planned Parenthood should be handled. Let's say, for instance, and I, th I don't think the federal government should be giving anybody anything, I think it's a state issue. If the states choose, their voters choose not to fund abortions, that doesn't mean that you can't fund a DNC for a woman. That doesn't mean you can't do cancer screenings. Okay. You need to put limitations on what can be done and make sure you use the brain and the intelligence and the foresight and the knowledge that was given to you by God, or if you're an atheist, Darwin, uh, given to you by the fish, I don't know. It's, use it, put laws on it so that it can be used intelligent, so that it can be used well for things like this. Put laws against them being able to use robotics to track people. We are in charge of it. I think a lot of people in what I like to call the liberty movement have somehow ended up Amish. I don't know what the hell has happened here, but somehow, and I don't know how, we've entered into this area where everything that is helpful to mankind, because it can also be used for evil, we shouldn't use it at all. And I think that's probably only true of nuclear power plants. I can't think of anything else that it's true of. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. Reminding you to go to Tumblr. I'm on it. Nobody else is, so you probably aren't there. Open up a Tumblr just so you can subscribe. Um, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can find him, unfortunately, on Facebook. M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Mike McLaughlin. Some of the best political writings and even fictional stories, vampire tales. A little bit of everything on his site. And last but not least, of course, Sticker Junkie. As we get into our last three stories, why do I support Sticker Junkie? Because they make absolutely amazing stickers. Uh, my band, Passing Time, had the honor recently of opening up for Pop Will Eat Itself at the Cleveland Agora. And uh, I talk about it on the last show at the beginning. Stickers loved by everyone. You know where they came from? They came from Sticker Junkie. And they're going to look great wherever our fans and friends end up sticking them. Um, CNN Money. I guess that'd be money.cnn.com. China limits overseas cash withdraw withdrawals for its citizens. This could also be called the, oh my God, Sam was right once again beyond all reason. This is a major reason why you should hit subscribe. Not only did I do how to live without banks, but I also have done, and that, that was what I, I, too, I think it was done in July, maybe August. Well, friends, I just did a, a, a reiteration of it and explained how in modern times we were going to see banks not allowing you to get your money out. I, what was it? 9 2013 Here it is, uh, 10 1 20, uh, 2015, excuse me, 10 1 2015. Mere days later, this being published, of course, yesterday, have a lot of yen in China? Well, Beijing would like to keep it that way. China oversees ATM cash limits. We saw it in Cyprus. Oh, we saw it in Poland. We saw it in Greece. Oh, it's not going to happen. China, you still want to keep your money in banks? Okay, maybe you need a bank account. I get it. It's fine. Why would you keep money in it? Listen to this. 
The Chinese government is clamping down on the amount of cash that its citizens can withdraw from ATMs overseas, its latest attempt to stop money flooding out of the country. The restrictions apply to holders of union pay bank cards, keep your money out of banks, issued in mainland China. For the remainder of 2015, withdrawals will be limited to 50,000 yen, that's only $7,868. Starting in 2016, the annual limit will be $15,737. That's about 100,000 yen. Union pay customers are also bound by an existing daily withdrawal limit of 10,000 yen per card. The new rules will apply to the vast majority of Chinese citizens because union pay is near monopoly on the card. So that could never happen in America. It's happened in China. It's happened in Cyprus. I just keep coming on here explaining to you that it's going to happen, and it keeps on happening. And then people want to say, oh, my God, he talks with a lisp. Oh, my God, he's got a tattoo. Oh, my God, he's got long hair. How about, oh, my God, he's almost a psychic here. It has happened now a fourth time. How many how many home runs do I have to hit before people listen to me on this? I'm amazed that nobody's talking about this. It's happened again in a major economy. Yahoo.com. What does China do, though? China's government to manage public dancing. That's right, friends, as China limits how much money its own citizens can take out of their own money, China has decided that the most pressing matter that they have to deal with at this time is how to manage public dancing. I used to think that North Korea was so insane that even China separated itself from it, and you can see instances throughout the last 20 years where that's been the case, that China sort of just lets North Korea be crazy and doesn't really get involved unless it has to. Well, look at this. Look, it might, this looks like a, a, a scene from North Korea. A spate of lousy disputes between middle-aged women in nearby residents has prompted China's communist leaders to step in and regulate dancing in public places, state media said Monday. Never mind the fact that you can't get your money out of the bank. We need to handle the immorality of dancing. Does that sound a lot to you like look at Kim Kardashian's ass as gold and banking reserves crash in America? I see an analogy there. Maybe it's just me. Groups of dancers often gather on China's public squares and street corners performing choreographed routines to loud music, sometimes provoking anger from neighbors. China will step up efforts to manage such dancers, creating the public square dancing management mechanism, which will be under the government leadership. All right, now look, the government is going to spend a fortune to regulate dancing in public square while the economy is so bad that they are all but locking the citizens' money in the bank and refusing to let them have it doling it out like they were their parents. Meanwhile, we worry about dancing. The agencies will manage dancing in accordance to existing laws. Dancing in public squares as a cultural sporting activity deeply loved by the masses has enriched the spiritual lives of people. Again, look, 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 at, the, look, look at the stick. Look at the stick. You know. Starburst taste so Absolutely <laughs> ridiculous, friends. I, I, mean, I don't even know what else to say. If that's not so obvious that it's spreading like wildfire. This notion that your money in the banks is not yours, and I don't know what to tell you, friends. I really don't. Go to How to Live Without Banks. It's like an eight-minute video. It's free. It works. Why do I know it works? Because I do it every day. So I'm a living example that I'm telling the truth. And that, friends... Oh, what's that music? What is that music? You guys know. That's the music that brings the dum -D of the day. What is the dum -dee of the day? Well, it's the first. I guess I probably should have done a Fukushima video today. I wasn't really thinking about it, so that'll be coming uh, Monday. The uh, dum -dee of the day is what we do at the end of each show as we get ready for the monthly Dutz Cap of the Month Award. Uh, if the China story sounded kind of dumb to you, that's because I'm 
and I, I say this all the time, so I don't really want to say it because then nobody ends up believing it. I have more dumb stories this time than I've ever had. Like the dunce cap of the month, I'm going to be sitting here with a pot of coffee and a pizza because I'm going to be up here forever. But I promise you, you're not going to want to miss a single story. We have idiots such as you've never seen. And for those of you that haven't seen the show before, tune into the last one we, the, our, where our winner, the drummer from MIA, uh, ran an entire marathon without putting a tampon in to f make women feel better and warm and fuzzy inside. So, trust me, it's even dumber this month. This is today's Dumb D of the Day, though. Knife-wielding man in SUV made it onto the JFK tarmac hours after the Pope left. Now, friends, I don't like the Pope. He's a very one-world one world nation pope am i going to say that he is the antichrist that's an awful big brush to paint with but i think whether he wants to or not whether he's doing it on purpose i'm not going to judge the pope's motive that's a bit much for me to chew off but he is heading us in a direction that resembles that which we were warned about in the book of revelation one world currency he's in favor of uh he believes in man-made global warming he wants agenda 21 to happen he is just a terrible, terrible person, in my opinion. Do I want to see the Pope stabbed? No, I would not like to see the Pope stabbed. Hours after Pope Francis left New York's JFK International Airport in Philly on Saturday, a retired New York City firefighter, that makes me feel great, driving a black SUV and armed with a knife, breached airport security prosecutors said, well, if you're to believe the media, a little girl breached uh, the, the security that was set up. It was the biggest security event in history. And supposedly a little girl walked up to the Pope to hand him a letter talking about how illegal immigration should be legal. Now, I, that to me sounds like a photo op. It sounds staged. And I don't believe it was random at all. You try to walk through that one, you've got a bullet in the head. You're not going to be some little girl just walking through. The police would have scooped her right up before she ever got near the Pope Mobile. Well, it looks like it's happening again. When he was caught, the suspect told police he was hoping to give the Pope his business card, according to court records. Give the Pope your business card and remember to bring your knife as you breach security and drive on to the tarmac. Chris Canella, 39, was driving a black Chevy Tahoe similar to Secret Service vehicles when he was stopped and arrested. Records show he was allegedly pretending to be part of a VIP motorcade when he made it to the tarmac. I guess holding up a sign and yelling, just with a bullhorn, wasn't something that ever crossed his mind during one of the 90 Pope sightings that were here. No, it's bring a knife to the tarmac. A guard said Canella drove up directly behind one motorcade around 6 p.m. and it flashed something silver that looked like a police badge. It then drove past the guard, according to court records. The dumb deal of the day here. Around 7.30 p.m., a police officer saw Canella, the genius, driving behind another VIP motorcade carrying Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi, ABC News reported. When the officer asked why he was following the motorcade, Canella showed him a retired FDNY badge, that's a firefighter badge for New York, and said the Secret Service allowed him in before, but he couldn't name the agent. That's the lie I used to get backstage. Police stopped and arrested him. <laughs> Unfortunately, that hasn't happened to me yet. Canella told police he went through the checkpoint. I do mine without a knife, anyway. He made it through the checkpoint because he was trying to give the Pope his business card and wanted to talk to world leaders to effectuate change, prosecutors said on Monday. He had a knife, that's great change, with a blade more than four inches long. Right, that's irrelevant. According to Port Authority Police, authorities searching Canella's car also recovered marijuana and a 9 millimeter magazine. Well, he didn't have the gun on him, so I'm not saying whether he wanted to hurt the Pope or not. What I'm saying is he was stupid enough to win the dumbdy of the day. And let me tell you something, friends. If you think that was dumb, it wasn't dumb enough to make the dumb camp of the month show that's coming either next week or the week after. I'm not sure how long Fuku's going to be. Friends, thank you for listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off, reminding you to go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself. Also, if you want to donate to the show, please do, because every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Look at this. Fact cam here. I, I, I never get... Rep I, I got one. I did get one bonehead. I already called him out. But I don't get people telling me I don't give sources anymore. I don't have any sources. I made it all up. Fact cam. You know what? That was paid for by donations.
So please keep them coming, and I will keep giving you a better show. Good night, friends. God bless.